A shotgun is the end-all, be-all home defense weapon. There's nothing better ever created than a shotgun. If you own anything else but a shotgun, um, you pretty much definitely... I don't even know. You should probably go walk off a cliff. <laughs> Gosh, that was intense. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, just joking. Uh, well, with that, let's go ahead and just roll the intro. Hey everybody, it's Eric and Roy, and thanks for checking out another Hatchet Cast episode. Today we have a very special one for you. We are going to do a breakdown on Roy's shotgun. So we'll be talking about shotguns today and just a breakdown, kind of all the specs, all the specs, all the specs, all the Every specs for you. But uh, before we get into it, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Also, make sure you comment below and hit the bell notification icon so you get notified whenever a new video is dropping. Um, any disclaimers? No, we Ooh. own this one. Actually, I do. We have we have one disclaimer. Primary Arms did send us this optic. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, there is an optic sitting on top of it right now, uh, provided to us by Primary Arms. Yeah. And then the only other thing I'm going to say, as far as disclaimer wise goes, if you own a shotgun for home defense purposes, you have to get out and train with it yeah. because. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot going on. That's a lot going on. Yeah. Let's let's get deep into it. Yeah. All right, well, uh -huh. very good. Cool. All yeah. right, so shotguns for me actually hold a little special place in my heart just for the fact of because uh, I've been shooting one since I was a, uh, a little a little guy, a little tyke, you know, running around uh, in the woods barefoot, hunting rabbits. Playing manhunt. Playing manhunt, yep. hunting rabbits and everything. Uh, so shotguns definitely hold a special place in my heart. Um, Eric, how much experience do you have with shotguns? To be honest, I don't. I had my dad had a skeet gun. You okay. know, it was a Remington 870. Yep. Um, used for shooting clay pigeons. After that, as far as military goes, I never really shot the shotgun, and we have them at my unit. But we we shoot them every so often. But um, you know, we didn't do a ton of breaching and stuff like that. So as far as using a shotgun for breaching. We, we talked about it, we trained mm -hmm. a little bit on it, but not enough to be proficient. So like, honestly, my, my shotgun stuff came from working with you. Yeah, so, um, you know, everyone is, we've, we've heard the term that a shotgun is kind of like the end all be all when it comes to a home defense tool. Pretty much the truth. Pretty much not the <laughs> truth. It's pretty much as far from the truth as you can possibly get, <laughs> yeah. okay? Um, there's a there is a lot going on here. Uh, a couple of, couple of, before I break down the rifle, um, training, is by far very very important okay but it's 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 really really important even when it comes to a shotgun yeah all right you typically have minimal round count mm. most shotguns are probably going to be in that five to seven rounds for home defense purposes like what we're talking yeah. about uh defensive type purposes uh this one here i think is sitting at uh, like i think four plus one so maybe five rounds uh, this yeah. happens to be a sbs so this is a 14 inch um sbs mossberg 590a1 Okay. Um, personally, for home defense purposes, wise goes, I think uh, this is the only way that you should own one mm. is as an SBS. Um, whether you pay the government or not, that's completely up to you. Does the Keltec KSG count as a shotgun? Keltec KSG is absolutely probably the worst shotgun ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> sad or uh, sad story. I used to have one. Yeah, it so was a long time. I'm ago. glad that I didn't know you then. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, oh, that was if brutal. I could, if I could go back in time, I would smack, smack me right in the face. <laughs> uh, Tech KSG's uh, bullpup design yeah. is miserable to shoot. Yeah. So, it is a um, lot, really crap. Yeah, you have the entire action basically over top of your face. Yeah. So they're, they're, I felt they're, it. I yeah. felt it. Yeah. So, uh, but anyways, uh, Mossberg 590. Uh, this happens to be a Mossberg 590A1. I happen to prefer the Mossberg series of shotguns and the 500 series primarily because of where the safety is mm -hmm. that's a very ambidextrous easy place to get to yeah because uh, on a shotgun that's going to be something that you're going to be manipulating very much like you do your rifle okay um you're going to manipulate that safety on and off constantly mm -hmm. all right so training is key with a shotgun how many times have you guys heard comment down below that you can't miss with a shotgun or the criminals run away from the sound of the ch -ch. yeah but anyways so outside of that um this particular shotgun here um, 
is definitely my favorite of all of them that I own. I'm mm -hmm. definitely a fan of this. You can miss with a shotgun. So I don't care what kind of sighting system you have on it, whether you have a red dot on here or if you have what this come from from the factory um, with ghost ring sights yeah. or just your traditional bead sight on a brass bead on the front. Typically, I have this 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 one set up with, uh, with ghost rings on it, the mm -hmm. 590A1 series. That's what it comes with. Uh, recently, Primary Arms sent us this optic, and we noticed that they, they actually had a pretty, pretty cool uh, shotgun reticle in it. So yeah. it was like, let's give that a shot. Getting out and training with your shotgun, once again, is extremely important because you can miss. Uh, I've taken shotgun classes before and watch people miss targets at 25 yards, at 15 yards, yeah. okay? Uh, your load when it comes to your shotgun is very, very important. Right. Taking and patterning your your, your shotgun, uh, like if you're gonna, your most common load is probably gonna be buckshot, yeah. uh, double off buck. Taking something like this here and just going out and buying whatever double up buck that you find at your local gun shop and loading it up and saying, okay, well, I'm good to go, it's probably not what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to get out and you're going to say, okay, I want to, I want to be able to, you know, shoot targets 10, 15 yards away. I need to be able to pattern that on a target. I need to go out. I don't want to exceed a certain diameter, right. but I also don't want that, that, that pattern to be so tight that basically I'm shooting a rifle cartridge because then I defeat the purpose of what? The scatter gun. The scatter gun, yeah. right? The shotgun, uh, the scatter effect, the shotgun, mm -hmm. what it's designed to do. The whole point behind it is to open up. Ideally, what you want um, is you probably want about about a, about a six to nine inch pie plate, right. you know, something that's going to kind of cover that center mass. So that's why one of the reasons, uh, especially with buckshot, that is very, very important to Would go you out. do that at like 25 yards or what distance? Um, for me, no, I actually probably do it like, uh, like about 10 yards. Okay. So um, I want mine to start opening up. Now there are loads that are going to stay tighter, but for me inside my house, most defensive situations, if I was actually going to grab my shotgun, which most likely I probably never would. Yeah. But if I was going to grab my shotgun for defensive purposes, I want that thing to pattern in about that six to nine inch circle right. and about that 10 to 12 yards. Mm. Okay. So take kind of like maybe your longest shot that you even have in your house across the living room, uh, down a long hallway, whatever it may be. Uh, I don't want it to expand too much right. and I don't want that pattern to be in, entirely too tight. Uh, with that pattern getting really, really tight where it's, you know, I got something like, uh, like, like, a, like federal builds a uh, load is called uh, tight lock. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, in this particular shotgun, it does not pattern very well uh, because at, at at ten yards, it's still basically shooting like a slug. Yeah. So it's a, it's almost like one solid bullet. It's it's holding together. Wow. So um, what I have in this right now, currently the load that I am utilizing is uh, critical defense mm -hmm. uh, and just standard two and three quarter uh, nine pellet double op buck. So uh, this this happens to work really well. well so what is as far as um, you know working from the front back, like how important is it to be running? Would you prefer a bead sight versus a red dot? You know, like as far as your sighting system? I prefer um, probably a ghost ring okay. style uh, or a red dot like this. Yeah. Um, I definitely like that. Uh, the problem is that you're gonna have a lot of times with a bead sight is getting a proper cheek well and getting low enough on the gun, mm. okay? So most people's head, when they come up and they go to cheek this here, they're here that their head is more in an upright position. Right. They're looking down on the front sight. Right. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why you miss. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we're not we're not having a proper sight alignment. Your natural okay? point of aim. Your is natural off. point of aim is off. Yeah. So you want to kind of get uh, to get your your cheek all the way down. Right. So uh, I happen to like ghost ring style sights like this. Um, it's, it's just a little faster target acquisition. Right. I don't necessarily have to get my cheek crunched all the way down. Uh, and that's kind of where stock position comes into play too, uh, as far as getting one set up that's for you. I happen to lock the, the Magpul stock. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, I would take uh, I would take just a typical factory stock um, and then have it modified, chopped down to about 11 and a half inches for the length of pull, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, when you're talking about your length of pull, most people are probably like, oh man, I want like a 13 and a half, 14 inch length of pull. Uh, on a shotgun, actually, I want this gun to be a little bit closer and tighter to me because yeah. um, I'm going to be mani manipulating here. Right. Um, um, on the on the front side, especially on a pump shotgun, uh, we'll we'll do an episode on semi-auto shotguns. Uh, what I prefer there, but in a pump shotgun, um, I like roughly about 11, 11 and a half inch pull okay. length pull. So. Yeah, I know something that whenever, like for example, the the shotgun to have the unit, they have like a actual like Benelli style where it's a a, uh, a pistol, pistol grip, grip oh, and yeah. it was miserable. Those are miserable. Dude. Because all that recoil goes straight into my wrist. So let's talk about that pistol yeah. grip shotguns. Um, 
you obviously have two different types of pistol grip. You have the traditional 90 degree, kind of yeah. like a uh, kind of like an AR style grip, yeah. all right? And then you have like the bird's head style grip, like mm -hmm. what your shock waves and things like that. I think if you want some type of pistol grip style shotgun, it needs to be that bird's head style. Yeah. Like what you would get on a TAC, uh, Remington TAC-14 or a Mossberg shockwave, right. uh, the little 14 and a half like that, because that puts your wrist in a more of a natural angle, okay? So we are, we are kind of rolling that wrist slightly a little bit forward. Uh, you can actually gather a, a little bit more of a correct point of aim yeah. with that uh, outside of this direct 90 like this, yeah. you know? Um, and that also allows the wrist to do what? be more natural yeah. kind of break yeah. you know a little bit so um if you're gonna run a pistol grip shotgun i'm not a huge fan of it put a stock on it you're gonna be more accurate with it um but i know for stowing away or something like that if i hey i just wanted a straight breaching shotgun or something like that then, then you know by all means go do it yeah uh, it has it has its purpose right yeah the pistol so. grip i think as far as the breaching portion because you may not have it shouldered correct and they're usually short or have no stock so it's literally yep. just for that breaching correct. so that makes sense but exactly as far as shoulder. But we're talking about a, the ultimate home defense weapon, right? Ultimate. Ultimate home defense. Home defense. Ultimate. It's kind of like an ultimate sub from a... Ultimate fighting championship. Publix. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a UFC in Publix. <laughs> <laughs> no, you never had an ultimate sub at Publix? No. Oh, man. Hey, All right, next class. You know I'll what make... missing out Yeah, on. <laughs> I know. We're going to have to get that. But, yeah, so... Obviously, pistol grips have a purpose, mm -hmm. uh, especially in breaching guns, but this is a home defense uh, setup that we have. All right, so on the front side, up here, uh, like I said, I, I typically prefer a ghost ring sight. This is Mossberg 590A1. Um, dropping down, I have a Surefire 4 in. It doesn't really matter what you do on the 4 in. I actually happen to like the Surefire 4 in because it gives this nice lump of yeah. chunk down here where your light is mounted in mm -hmm. uh, to keep my hand from sliding too far forward so it kind of almost gives me like a hand stop yeah that i can kind of uh, thrust forward on when i'm when i'm doing it and then when also when i'm shooting yeah. i can i can put that constant forward pressure right okay most people think about shooting a shotgun that you're putting rearward pressure back into your shoulder so i'm putting rearward pressure here and then forward pressure here mm -hmm. so you kind of um, pull like you're almost like doing like this yeah kind of right? pulling apart yeah so i do like the surefire four in it's not a ton of lumens or anything like that it's not crazy crazy bright or anything but it's plenty enough um we'll see it in the b-roll yeah, right in the B -roll. here so um i do have a sling connection point it just basically uh, comes straight in from my um, my magazine tube that holds my barrel down. Um, should definitely have a sling point on any kind of thing uh, that you may potentially carry with you. Yeah. And then all the way back on the back side, I can I can run a sling through it there. Uh, working back, like I said, this is a 14 and a half inch SBS. Um, side saddles. Side saddles on a shotgun are very, very important because they do not carry a lot of rounds in the magazine tube, correct? Mm, yeah. I don't like this side saddle that's on here um i typically run more of a mesa tactical uh, s attack s tack actually not yeah they mesa call tactical. them the shotgun cards shotgun card yeah i prefer a shotgun card something that you can rip off on a velcro yeah okay um those are nice because i can load some of those up with buckshot i can load some of it with slugs mm -hmm. i can even load them up with birdshot if i chose to do so whatever it may be and i can kind of pop them on and off there's having to sit here and try to reload this um this currently has a mesa tactical on it uh and what it has on there is kind of wanting to play around with one to formulate an opinion mm -hmm. uh i've always ran the like the Velcro cards. Yeah. Uh, so we'll run some B-roll on those right there so you guys kind of see what those look like. One of the things actually, uh, Steve, a buddy of ours who actually runs like the Beretta, yeah. he actually uses the shotgun cards and he'll like put them on his gear and he yeah. rips them off, almost does like a reload of his card. Correct, which is pretty exactly. Neat. That's the other advantage to it is when this goes empty, the next thing I need to do um, outside of topping the gun off is I need to top off my source of ammunition. Yeah. So uh, when, you, when it comes to running a shotgun, you know, um, you, you really have to find and get creative with, with ammunition because yeah. the gun doesn't really hold a lot and you don't have necessarily a magazine to feed from. Right. I'm not a fan of, I know now we have, you know, Mossberg and, you know, there's a ton of million Turkish shotguns out there that use <laughs> magazines. I'm not a fan of magazine fed shotguns. Yeah. Uh, most right. of the time the magazines are not very reliable. Oh, so right? very. And they're very, they're huge. Yeah. They're massive and they hold only five or 10 rounds. Yeah. And you got this big old, clunk of a magazine <laughs> and it's so big it's not like you're going to be carrying an additional magazine yeah. on your kit because it's, it's, it's so large you're not going to fit it on your belt yeah so i don't I, I i if you run it you run it but i prefer to stick more traditional so um up top like we said uh this is the primary arms what, what model do they call this thing this is the um 
SLX MD 25 G2. Okay. Um, they sent us this and we were like, hey, what, you know, what should we put it on? I know it has, you know, the ready? capability of running um, on several different types of systems. And then I was looking on their website and went over the specs and their reticles and primary arms. One of the things that they're known for is creating really cool reticles. Yeah. All right. Uh, they actually have a shotgun reticle. So uh, has kind of the Chevron. You can zero that with a one out slug at 25 yards. And then basically you have a BDC that will work down through. Mm -hmm. uh, you have that donut of death around the outside of it. That's kind of like, that's your ideal for your pattern when you're shooting it based on your load. And uh, so we'll let you guys know, this is not a review on that optic whatsoever. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll do that later on down the road. It's probably gonna live on the shotgun here. Yeah. Uh, we'll, run, we'll run some rounds through it and abuse our shoulders. Eric's yeah. gonna get to do that. So uh, Roy's gonna do no, that. Eric's gonna do that so. <laughs> Eric hasn't had the opportunity to run a shotgun as much as I. Yeah, did. yeah. I yeah. took a shotgun class um, from from back in the day at Tactical Response when oh, you know, wow. James Jaeger and we went through like I don't know 1,500, 2,000 rounds of 12 Jeez. gauge in Christ, like dude. two days. So Did you go to like a chiropractor when you're done? Uh, pretty much. You get you sorted know, out. I, I, yeah, I yeah. was I was black and blue. Yeah. <laughs> so, and my thumbs were bleeding and everything from uh, reloading over and over and over. So uh, there's a lot of great shotgun classes that are out there. Um, I'm not a shotgun instructor, mm -hmm. but uh, if you ever want to take a rifle class from us, we do teach those. Great way to support <laughs> us. <laughs> great way to support us. Yeah. Another great way to support us is what? Head over to our website. Pick, pick up, up some gear. Pick up some gear. Yeah. So Maybe uh, we'll hold those S-Tech cards on our website. That's actually a good one. We should do that. So Yeah, yeah maybe we will. Yeah. All right. Um, the other thing I like about the 590A1, uh, it's kind of like the old um, Remington 870 police models, is the trigger guard is actually, the entire trigger housing is metal. Wow. Um, the standard 500 series, not that, you know, the 500 is a great shotgun, and uh, I honestly haven't seen a whole lot of people break them, um, but the uh, the trigger guard and trigger housing where it holds all the mechanism is actually polymer plastic. So mm. 590, 590A1 is, uh, is all metal. The 590A1 is the one that's obviously approved for you know for military use yeah um, they run a heavier profile barrel a thicker profile barrel that is usually typically chrome lined yeah. also so it's a little bit more robust and then all the way on the back side the magpul i don't even know what they call this but shotgun the stock magpul shotgun stock so uh, definitely prefer that and like I said earlier, once again, I prefer the Mossberg series of shotguns that are at least in the 500 um, because of where the safety is positioned yeah. and then also where the magazine tube, uh, the, the magazine releases. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I think that out of all the stocks as well that I've shot, you know, the Magpul is the most comfortable uh, and it has a really good gel pad. And that's actually one point is like, I'm the limb saver, I think it's kind of lame, but on a shotgun, it's kind of nice, you know, having some nice padding. Especially if you're going to get go through a class and you're using a lot of shells, it's going to be... Can you hand me your wallet? Huh? You got your wallet on you? No. Why? So I could pull your man card? Ah, <laughs> listen here, Linda. <laughs> Big gummit. God, right in the keister. Just because I don't run shotguns that much. <laughs> Limb saver. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Listen, I'm listen getting old, this, Listen to this guy Brilliant. over here. Jesus so. Christ. No, but I mean, as, as far as like shotguns, when you're talking about training... It is just a lot of work to mm. manipulate that thing, but also top it off and tack reload and know like what you're consuming, how to rip the cards off, put a new one on. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot you're thinking about. And understanding about. your load. And uh, it's, yeah, it's a slower yeah. process yeah. overall in yeah. comparison to other systems. You know? What big advantages are is once you do become proficient with one and you get it set up, I mean, you can you can you can be extremely deadly with yeah. it. Yeah, that's all there is to it. So yeah. uh, you really can. So you can you can do a lot of damage with a shotgun, and it's also a very universal tool. Right. Okay. Uh, it can be used for a lot of things. We can door breach with it. Okay. Uh, we can you know uh, put we bean can, bags we in can, them. Could be bean bags, non lethal. In yeah. Them. We can put rock salt in them. We can we can go. Um, we can go bird shot, you know, you can you can hunt with it. Yeah. Know, there's a lot of different types of stuff that you can do with it. Uh, cut shells, if you guys ever seen what a cut shell is. So if you're limited on your ammunition and now I need something more kind of like a slug, taking like a cheaper load, like a, you know, seven and a half, you know, um, shot, regular typical bird shot or something that you're gonna like shoot sporting clays with or something like that, you can do a cut shell. So that's pretty cool. So mm -hmm. I showed you that one time, right? Where we did the cut shell? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it uh, turns it basically almost into like a slug. Oh, yeah, Not slug, quite yeah. as accurate as a traditional slug, but uh, it'll, you know, uh, someone's close enough, you can get it. Yeah. Get the job done. Yeah. And then uh, just the other advantage to it is availability and ammunition. Yeah. You can pretty much almost walk into still to this day any Walmart and pick up 12 gauge. 
Yeah. So literally, may, it's on the shelf. Yeah, you may not find other rifle cartridges. Mm -hmm. uh, you may not find pistol. Depending on the Walmart that you go to, they may be. Um, I know a lot of WalMarts in our area have cut out a lot of Speed, ammunition, yeah. but one of the Mulberry things, still got Mul it. Bud. Mulberry's got everything. Mulberry, oh, yeah. Florida. So, but uh, they've cut out like rifle cartridges, certain mm -hmm. rifle cartridges like 5.56 and stuff like that. But you can still pick up uh, 12 gauge. Yeah. You know? so, obviously, 5.56 is a much more capable round. Yeah. Gives you a wider range. I believe that even 5.56 is a better home defense system. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that an AR platform. Is, is a much better home defense system than what a shotgun is. So yeah. I don't think that a shotgun is the end all be all when it comes to home defense. Uh, do I think that you should own one? Yes. Do I think that you should learn how to utilize one? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you never know what you're gonna have uh, an opportunity to pick up. Yeah, I mean, it could also be one of those things where like you're out and abroad or whatever, and all you have is a pistol, but you're at a, a buddy's house or a friend's house and you're able to pick up a shotgun mm -hmm. or you find one out on the street, you know, like you're able to run that. So like being able to run all different types of equipment is so important, even if you're not familiar or like use it all the time or don't even own one, it's good to get familiar with it. Um, and I think the other thing you were talking about with the loads, as far mm -hmm. as like you can diversify what load yeah. you have in the tube, you can have, you know, like, hey, I got two slugs and then I've got buckshot and yeah, then Yeah, or if else, I'm running you know? all buckshot or something like that and I need to top the gun off, I need to quickly throw a slug in or something like that. Yeah. There's there's techniques for that. I can, you know, if I have, you know, if I have my card over here loaded up with some buckshots, but I keep maybe my front two yeah. position with, uh, with slugs in them, yeah. you know, I can easily, you know, come back up over top, drop in a, a slug, run that through yeah. and now I have a slug, you know, yeah. that, you know, my, my, my target is a little bit further away. So, um, there, there is a lot of versatility that can be, can, can be done with it. Yeah. So, uh, main key is actually just physically getting out and putting some reps in behind it and learning how to professionally how to run it. it so. Or even like you have lethal or non-lethal in the tube and then lethal outside the tube, you yeah. know? Yeah. There's a, there's a ton of applications for it. Maybe I don't you get confused. Did you ever see those videos? Dude, that'd be <laughs> terrible. Oh my gosh. So one of the things, uh, actually talk about the KSG real quick. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things I used to always hear here in the shop is right, guys wanted to buy a KSG because it has two magazine tubes in it. And what their intentions were is they were going to put non-lethal in one tube and lethal in the other tube. I never said that. You know my... what you should do is you should always run lethal. Yeah. So because if you're drawing your gun, this is not legal advice. Not legal advice. Just an opinion. Just an opinion, but you should run lethal. Uh, yeah. Non-lethal, obviously, if you got you know animals that you need to run off your property or yeah. land or something like that, that works quite well. So. Funny story, I did use a shotgun one time in Afghanistan because we had this giant cat. It was not a normal cat. It was an Afghanistan demon cat, <laughs> and it was literally crapping in the commander's tent. Oh. So we grabbed the shotgun and some bee grounds and got rid of them. Got rid of them. Yeah. I bet you that hurts. Yeah. So. They were it, dude, he got hit by one? He even he just like really? took it and then yeah. like walked away. It was a freak of nature. Yeah. But uh yeah, I mean as far as the shotguns go, I think there's tons of applications for it. I don't think the shotgun is dead. You're starting to see a lot of departments mm -hmm. kind of go away from the shotgun to more yeah. like rifles in this the car. Actually but was a, this was a patrol rifle. Yeah. Uh, I bought this off of Gunbroker um years back as a SBS straight yeah. off a gun broker, yeah. uh, police trade in. Sometimes you'll find these things, uh, in, for the exception of having to do the unconstitutional and unlawful registration through the mm -hmm. government, yeah. um, you can you can find these things actually relatively freely and expensive. Of, uh, yeah, I mean, this. like how, how much are sh like a standard shotgun, like a Mossberg They've shotgun? gone up a quite a bit in price, yeah. but for whatever reason, you can find factory SBA, well, I know why, because you're forced to register it. Yeah. But, um, but like this one here was picked up for like 350 bucks with the Surefire 4N on wow. it, and the Magpul stock and everything else like that. So yeah. um, it's obviously an SBS, so you're going to spend another 200 bucks in an unconstitutional, you know, uh, it is registration. An, yeah, against but, your rights. But, um, you know, I mean, if you want to, if you want something nice and short like that, pick up like a TAC-14 or something like that, or yeah. a, a Mossberg Shockwave, uh, or just a typical Mossberg 590A1 with an 18 and a half inch barrel. It's still yeah. going to do the job. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. Uh, you, can, you can get it done. You actually hold more rounds. So if you're worried about capacity and I want to increase that capacity, you're going to typically go up to like eight rounds. Yeah. Um, versus this is, you know, five rounds. Right. So. But I think it's still a great tool that everyone should go out and learn how to use and uh, utilize and become proficient with it. Um, but it is not the end all be all. And the, the whole mindset of that you can't miss, yeah, um, get that. out and run it. And I will guarantee you, we've, we've brought this thing out to open gym before. 
And guys were kind of confused about how to. Yeah, they're confused how to about how to operate it. Yeah. Um, guys are missing. Yeah, missing. Yeah. Missing targets, stuff like that. Um, so I would I would suggest you know get some time behind one, run it. Maybe one day we'll offer a shotgun class. Um, I'd probably need to go take a few more classes yeah. to refresh myself. Yeah. So so. I mean, yeah, it's something that we could. You guys know happen. a good shotgun instructor. Comment below. Comment below yeah. because maybe I'll go take a shotgun class. Yeah, that actually. I'll get I, Eric inside a shotgun yeah, class. We have it. two of these, yeah. so we can definitely get that done. So hey, yeah. and then you can take the class with us. Yeah. We can be students together. There we go. That'd Professional be student. Cool. We're always students. So. Yeah, that'd actually be pretty fun. So yeah. if you guys know a good shotgun instructor, um, defensive shotgun instructor, uh, send us their contact info. Yeah. Comment down below, um, and then uh, I do know one, but he travels quite often. and He's kind of hard to get a hold of. Yeah, so, um, but maybe one day we'll get in touch with him. So. Cool. Well, guys, if you want to see any other updates about shotguns, you know, you can go check out our Instagram page also on X or Twitter. We are also posting out updates usually once a day. And then also we have all our videos on Rumble as well as our Spotify Hatchetcast podcast. I have a great episode that's actually about to come out on Spotify because oh, we've really? been kind of off of it for a yeah. while. But an incredible story that actually came out of the Vietnam War from a guy that we know, Very cool. Dan. Nice. Yeah, awesome. incredible story. So we'll put that up on Spotify, but um, make sure you guys go out and train. Familiarize yourself with as much equipment as possible. And we always talk about here on the show is be well-rounded. Be a well-rounded shooter where you are constantly trained to be the asset and not the liability. We'll see you on the next one.